we're going to go through the practice test. Um, I'll give you the answers, talk to you about how to get the answers, um, just in case you are struggling with any of the questions. So number one, define a rational number and give an example. Um, you have some official math definitions, uh, but we would be looking for something like a number that can be written as a fraction or something to that effect. Um, number that can be written as a fraction um, or any other official definition you've been given. Don't forget you also need an example. That's half of your points. So negative 2 is an example. 3.1 would be an example. Um, square root of 9 would be an example. So any number that can be written as a fraction. Number two, define a repeating decimal. Give an example. So we have a decimal with a digit or block of digits. Oops. that repeat. An example, any decimal where you've got this repeating bar across the top, or if you wanted to write it a little bit differently, you could show the pattern with the three dots at the end. Either way. Now for ter terminating decimal, oops. spell, a decimal that has a finite number of digits. And that would be something like 3.12. There are no little dots at the end. There is no repeating bar. There's actually an end to that decimal. For number three, you'll be labeling a Venn diagram and giving an example of each type of number. So you'll have to decide which way you go through. Do you want to start on the outside and work your way in? Like all numbers are real. Then from real, you have rational and irrational. Those are my two types. I know rational goes in this left side because rational breaks down to a lot of different types of numbers. As I go through, I will cross out my options so that I know I don't leave any out. So now from integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers, integers hold more than any of the others. So I know that goes on the outside. Then between natural and whole numbers, whole numbers actually have more possibilities because of the zero. And then for an example of each, remember a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. An integer is positive or negative with no fractions. A whole number, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six to infinity. A natural number is just a number uh, those counting numbers that do not include zero. Probably the most popular irrational number is pi. But you can, you can fill in any of these numbers uh, that you know. Any integer does not have to be negative 7. As long as it's an integer, you can write it. Number four, what is the decimal expansion of the number 5 twelfths? Show your work. Is it rational or irrational? And explain. 
So to make five twelfths a decimal, we have a lot of different options. I would go with division. You're just going to go through and complete the long division. And what you'll notice is that I start getting some re repeaters here. This six is going to continuously repeat because now I have 80 shows up again in my work. So my decimal expansion is 4.16 with the six repeating. So that's part one. I showed my work. Is the number rational or irrational? Well, it's a repeating decimal, so it would be rational. Now, when they ask you to explain, I'm asking you, how do you know that it's rational? So rational because, and tell me why. Because any decimal that repeats is a rational number. Because any repeating decimal can be written as a fraction, which makes it rational. You've got to come up with the explanation that makes most sense to you that's correct. Number five, which number is not equivalent to three and three elevenths. So we're looking for not equivalent. So in order to do that, your best bet is to go through each option and see, can I make 36 elevenths equal three over thir uh, three and three elevenths? Well, A is an improper fraction. So if I take three and three elevenths and make it improper, multiply and then add. So 11 times three is 33. 33 plus 3 is 36. These are equivalent, so A is not an option. B, could I turn 3 and 6 over 22 into 3 and 3 elevenths? Well, if I divide 2 out of each of these numbers, I get 3 and 3 elevenths. Those are equivalent, so B is not an option. So now we have to decide which of these decimals equals three and three elevenths. Well, my three is staying whole, so I just have to look at three elevenths and decide what does that look like as a decimal? So 11 times two is 22. Eleven times seven is eighty. I mean, sorry, seventy-seven. I get thirty again, so I'm going to have another two. I get eighty again, so I'm going to have another seven. So the numbers that are actually repeating are the two and the seven. So that means this choice D here is equivalent. So D is not an option not an option. So that leaves us with C. C is the only number that is not equivalent to three and three elevenths. So be very careful when you're working on number five. Number six, which number is equivalent to 65 hundredths? So if you read that decimal correctly, you actually get the fraction, 65 hundredths. Okay, if you struggle with that, you can look at it as in the digits 65 become my numerator. I have two digits after the decimal, which means my power of 10 has two zeros. Now you'll notice this option is not in our list because we can simplify. Both of these numbers are divisible by five, and I end up with 13 over 20. Number seven, before I even try to turn this fraction into a decimal, notice that we have a negative. So my decimal answer is going to be a negative number, which means A and B are out automatically. 
So I know my answer has to be C or D. So if I start dividing, 11 divided by 6, remember it's numerator divided by denominator. Don't always trust that the smaller number goes on the inside of the division symbol. The numerator always goes inside. I know I'll end up with a decimal. Might as well just go with that now. So 6 times 1, which we knew because C and D both have a 1 in the 1's place. So we just go through our long division. And you'll notice that now my 20 is repeating, which means that this three is going to continue being written. So my answer is 1.83 with just the three repeating. Be very, very careful if you look at D, D is telling us that the 8 and the 3 are repeating, and that is not the case. So take your time. Don't, don't look and see, okay, repeating, and not take a second to see exactly what is repeating. If you get D, that means you're not taking your time and being careful. For number 8, 8 is very simple if you truly look and see what it's asking you to do. What number, when used in place of the diamond, makes the statement true? So what we have is we have 3 plus some number over 2 is going to equal 7 and a half. Now, if I look at the left-hand side, I don't have any whole numbers. So there's a very good chance I'm looking at an improper fraction. So if I take 7 and a half and I make it improper, multiply and then add, I end up with 15 halves. So 3 plus some number over 2 has to equal 15 over 2. Take two seconds and think about it. What plus 3 is going to equal 15? My denominators are 2, so I only have to look at the numerator. What plus 3 makes 15? 12. This is a very simple question once you stop and think about what it's asking you for. Number nine. Now, number nine is a table. A few things to remember about the table. If you use your graphic organizer to help you, um, that will definitely be a good tool to use. A little bit of strategy is to look at what's real first. So every single number that you are going to encounter this school year is going to be real. So you should be able to get real marked all the way down from the get-go. The second step is to look at rational and irrational. All of, if these numbers are real, they've got to be either rational or irrational, one or the other. Not both, not none. If it's real, it's got to be rational or irrational. So that's the first step is to go through and decide, is it rational or irrational? Three-sevenths is a fraction. That's rational. Square root of 15. 15 is not perfect, so it's irrational. Pi. Pi is one of the most famous irrational numbers ever. Negative 3 can be written as a fraction. It's rational. So the next thing you can look at is if the number is irrational, you're done. If the number is rational, now you have to decide, is it an integer or not? So 3 sevenths is not an integer because integers can't be fractional. They've got to be either like a whole number pause or it's opposite. So that means negative 3 is an integer. So working your way from real to rational or irrational, and then for any rational number deciding what else is happening is probably the best strategy. If you're looking at your graphic organizer, you're starting on the outside and working your way in. Number 10, 
Write 63 hundredths repeating as a fraction. Show and explain each step. So you have some options here. If you know the pattern, you can go straight to the pattern. You can go straight to 63 over 99. The only trick is you do need to explain each step. So what your job will be if you know the pattern is to explain how you know the pattern. Okay. And that's on you as to what the best way to explain that is. Um, you don't have to explain all the steps in the equation. You can just explain how, how did you know that the 63 needed to be the numerator? How did you know that a 99 had to be in the denominator? And saying, because you told me, doesn't cut it. Okay. How did you know, given a decimal that has two digits repeating, how did you know what to do? If you would like to go through the process, then if you are writing down 0.63 times 100, you're going to have to explain why. Why pick 100? Okay. And then our next step is to actually multiply and then subtract by the original, right? Explain what you're doing here. Subtract the new new decimal from or uh, subtract the old decimal from the new decimal okay so what you can do over here are kind of like the steps that you wrote in your guided practice or the guided notes then set up an equation okay so again if you go to the guided notes that you did this you can use those steps as your explanation then we have 100 times the fraction minus the original fraction equals 63. So we get 99 times the fraction equaling 63. Divide by 99, divide by 99. Again, write your steps or explain what you're doing. The only trick is if you answer 63 over 99, you're actually not going to be complete because we can actually simplify. You get... 21 over 33, which can be simplified again. 7 over 11 is your final answer. Your best bet is to know the pattern and be able to explain it. Okay, after practicing the method enough times, I realized that the numbers that repeat become your numerator. Um, if you have two digits repeating, you're, take, you're, you're taking the number times 100 and subtracting one from itself, that leaves you 99. So however many digits are repeating is how many nines you have in the denominator, something like that. Um, but that's up to you as to how you're going to explain that. And that's it.